I don't know if you know who David Goggins is by any chance. I do. I mean, I don't know him personally, but oh my lord! So I'm I'm running 48 miles together with him in person in a month. I'm what? Doing a, <laughs> You're doing an ultra marathon with him and probably other stuff because he enjoys just breaking people and making them cry. Oh so, my god, I'm so jelly. So no, I well, I offered we we agreed a, a while ago to do a podcast, and he's like, oh yeah, come, we'll, we'll do it this date. And is he oh, in the Bay and, Area? Uh, I don't know where the hell he is, but we're doing it in, uh, I don't think I'm supposed to say where it is, oh, okay. but it's not anywhere close to anywhere of this. Okay, cool. It's in the middle of nowhere. Got it. But he seems Great. to be in a bunch of different locations. Like he, he's uh, in Oregon or something like that. Like, what does he do for outside of writing books and being inspirational? Does he actually train people or like yeah, no, life coach? He, or what he's is he doing? Just, he's uh, full-time insane. Like he fights forest fires like for a few months a year wow. as a farmer, like unpaid labor. Like he, you know, there's a bunch of people who are like him, like Navy SEALs and so on, that kind of make a career out of motivational speaking, all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. He's not interested in any of that. He's literally interested in uh, just doing hard shit all the time. <laughs> breaking himself. Breaking himself he personally. He seems like he wants to break himself. And yeah. that that book is amazing. And the audio book's amazing when he's talking about how fat he was yeah. and how he just had to go and keep running and his like legs are broken and he's just in super pain and he just goes through it. It's really inspiring. The I, inspiring I, I, thing also. Are you going to videotape yourself doing this? Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. can't wait to see you get destroyed. Yeah. Well, This is going to be so dies. entertaining for the, <laughs> for the Lex audience. <laughs> Woo! The pain. Uh, but the other oh, inspiring yeah. thing is he's, he's uh, happily married. Oh, good. And there's a partnership there that's, you know, everybody finds a, a mm -hmm. this attention as a push and pull that's beautiful, I think. Oh. Uh, uh, but in speaking of uh, beautiful push and pull, uh, how about that transition? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, uh, you and Shamath, uh, on, uh, he's a friend of yours. Bestie. Uh, besties. besties. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good friend. I mean, he's there's very few people in my life. Him, Elon, David Sachs, John Brockman's, very few people have supported me as much as those folks. I mean, I'm a huge debt. So he's also a co-host on the All In podcast. We taped episode 21 today. <laughs> oh, today? Cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, every Friday uh, now. They want to do every Friday. They're addicted like me and you are to podcasts. So you're going to release it when? It's probably released as we're sitting here. As we're, oh, Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I can't Special wait. Special guest on it. We had Draymond Green from the Warriors phone oh, wow. in so we had our first guest awesome <laughs> yeah so it's really funny because he plays poker with us and we're all besties so yeah beautiful so yeah. uh you guys went pretty heated uh yes, we against did. each other versus rob uh, on robin Hood. yes maybe uh there's just two things i want to ask yeah first on the actual robin Hood discussion and the wall mm -hmm. street best discussion can you steal man his argument? What was the nature of the disagreement? Where, so, where, what, yeah, what, what is the little, because I don't think it's as big as a yeah. space as it came off as sounding. So, what is the nature of the disagreement? He felt that Robin Hood turned off trading because the hedge funds told them to and that they were bowing down to the pressure of the hedge funds. That's not true, but in a vacuum of information, yeah. you know what happens to people's minds, conspiracy theories abound, and sometimes there is a conspiracy theory, and sometimes there's just the appearance of impropriety or a bunch of related things. Like, when you look at the Trump situation with Russia, like, was Trump trying to coordinate with Russia, or were the Russians just screwing with a bunch of, like, neophyte, idiotic dipshits, like, you know, Donald Trump Jr. who don't know any better. Yeah. And they don't know that you shouldn't meet with the Russians. And if you do meet with the Russians, you are probably a useful idiot. You probably should tell the FBI. <laughs> like, they're just a bunch of idiots in all likelihood. Who knows? And, and there's and, a vacuum of information. Like and there's a vacuum right? of information. We don't know. And the Russians are trying to compromise everybody. So would you call it a conspiracy or would you call it an attempted, you know, uh, conspiracy? There was no conspiracy here. What it was was, Robin Hood needed to raise billions of dollars to say solvent in all likelihood. Uh, and they weren't allowed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So they were forced into not talking about it in all likelihood and had to come up with that money or shut down. And then what got me upset with Chamath, and we had a talk afterwards that people don't know about. I'll talk about it here for the first time. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, we had to have a little, we had to air it out. Yeah, in the episode after, you guys sound like you've had... a private you made up we had a private discussion just one-on-one -on -one. and we said listen we love each other we're besties we've always been there for each other what happened here 
-hmm. And what happened there is I'm fiercely loyal to my folks, whether it's Chamath or Travis from Uber or Saks or whoever. Yes. I'm just a loyal guy. Yes. And I'm always ride or die with my founders. If I invest awesome. in them, even if they make a mistake and Uber made plenty of mistakes, I always went on CNBC on my podcast and said, hey, we're going to fix these things. I'm in touch with the team. Mistakes were made. We're going to solve them. This is a group of people with great intent who want to make the world a better place. And you know what? I was hated for it for a period of time with Uber. I was hated for it last week with Robinhood. I got a lot of blowback. But I think in both of those cases, eventually I was right. Uber's doing great stuff in the world. Robinhood's doing great stuff in the world. And I like to be loyal to my investments and my partners to, to just, I feel like if you invest and you're on the team, you know, you have really three choices. You can either fight for your team, you can go silent, uh, or you can throw your team under the bus. And I've watched investors throw the team that they invested in that made them a bunch of money under the bus. Not acceptable to me. And being quiet is not acceptable to me. So I always ask the founder, do you want me to, is it okay if I go out and defend you publicly? If they say yes, I do it. That's and then, beautiful, by the way, because what else do we have in this world if not friendship? It's, it's, loyalty it's, means everything to me. I grew up yeah. in Brooklyn where if you were not loyal and you, you, know, and you were not loyal to your crew, then you, you were a ronin. You were a, you know, out there on your own flailing in the, you know, and trust me, you do not want to be on your own in 1970s, 80s, Brooklyn, Manhattan. <laughs> like you need to have a crew with you. I've gotten into, you know, yeah. you don't want to get into a fight with 10 guys and be alone yes. or just be with you. You need a crew to survive. So I just learned or, early and my dad who owned a bar um, just drilled into me being loyal. And so for whatever reason, I'm a bulldog when it comes to loyalty. And Shamath came out and said, you know, these guys need to go to jail and they're scumbags. Yeah. And, I, and I'm trying to defend them. And I'm in a position where I can't defend them because I don't have complete information. There is no complete information. It's in the heat of the moment. And then it becomes the number one story. Yeah. And it's my number three investment. Yeah. And Chamath has a competing company, SoFi. Yeah. And he's killing my guys. And then I started killing his guys. Yes. And then all of a sudden we're like, wait a second, we're best friends. Yes. And we're swinging our swords at each other. And we're a group of the seven samurai who fight together. Mm -hmm. When did we turn on each other? And then everybody else who's on the pod, the two Davids, who, you know, both on the spectrum a bit, they got a little Asperger's or whatever. <laughs> no offense, Lex. <laughs> None taken. None taken. I'm not saying, you know, well, yeah, there is a, yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah, into AI yeah, and, you, yeah, you know, yeah. you might be somewhere. No, it's not a coincidence, yeah. Might not be a coincidence. Anyway, we upgraded the two Davids <laughs> firmware. We're going to upgrade your firmware after this. I'll Dark give awesome. you, a, yeah, you, how, you're on the 1.5. You have the three emotions now, or should we add a fourth? <laughs> no, Do you want to go with joy? I'm oh, on the 2.0 You're on the 2.0. You got the yeah. joy. Okay, yeah, okay, how's it yeah. working out in the uh, joy it's chip? Difficult. It's, it's difficult. You'll get there. <laughs> just let it happen, Lex. Just let the let the joy sure. happen. Yeah. So anyway, we just talked about it offline, yeah. and we decided, like, listen, we didn't pre-game that episode, and I happened to be skiing with my family. I had taken the first like vacation since the goddamn pandemic started, and I was having a wonderful time. And then this whole thing blows up. I'm coming off the mountain, just you know, having a great time with my daughter skiing and. You know, and then I'm mixing it up with him. And, you know, he had a short fuse about it because he was triggered, he told me, because he really feels like he's fighting to defend, you know, the everyman. And I was like, yeah. that's what my team's doing. That's why they named the company Robin Hood. Yeah. We're on the same side here. Yeah. And then over time, we've started to see the explanation come out. And, you know, people who are friends are going to have disagreements. In the podcast, it happened to happen very publicly. And we didn't know it was going to become the number one story. Mm -hmm in the world. If Trump still had his Twitter handle, this would not have been a story. Yeah. Tr Trump would have said something about GameStop and he would have co-opted the entire conversation. Yeah. So in a way, going back to our censorship discussion, I might actually be in favor of Trump being censored <laughs> only <Just> because, <laughs> only because how delightful has it been since January 20th yeah. that we can all focus on something other than him. Yeah, He was exhausting. I mean, the amount of cycles he took on our he, processors. He the, uh, the oh. conversation. And now this is a little bit more of a, a distributed, like this. Yeah, everybody a bunch gets of a this. chance to be the number everybody one news story. Chance. Everybody gets a chance to, to discuss it. But So on a scale of one to 10, how much do you love uh, Chamath? Oh, it's 11. I mean, 
I love Chamath. I mean, we played cards last night. We're we're besties, and you know, I would I would I would literally jump in front of a, a bullet for him. Is that, I mean, what's the lesson in that discussion? Because it was super. I wouldn't. I think the love was felt and the respect was felt throughout, even when you guys are going pretty vicious on each other. I uh, is there a lesson to be learned? Do you regret any of that conversation? No. I mean, I think. He 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 told me that he regretted some of the things he said. He said publicly on the podcast, like, listen, I was a little hot. I may have said things in the heat of the moment. But I don't live with too much regret because I always think about intent. And it's one of the nu nuance and intent have been totally lost. The idea that we could have any of kind of a nuanced discussion about things seems to have been forgotten. Yeah. And the fact that people don't look at people's intent, if you hurt somebody's feelings or you disrespect somebody or you you... you do something mean or whatever. I always look at the intent, you know? And I've had people attack me and I look at the intent and I'm like, mm, that person feels bad about themselves. Or maybe I said something and I insulted them and that's why their blowback's there. So I always try to think, what's the intent of the person? And then almost universally, you talk to somebody and you find out you ascribe some crazy intent that's not there. And they're like, oh yeah, you know what happened? I got in a fight with my spouse and I well, I didn't sleep last night and I've had a lot of anxiety about my business and I, I just snapped and said something about you. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Like I literally had somebody on Twitter um, this past summer, I had said something. Um, I was complaining about a New York Times journalist uh, and something I thought was wrong. And this person was a fan of that journalist. And they went, I kid you not, onto my social media account, mm -hmm. found a picture I'd taken about the how blue the sky was one day. Mm -hmm. They reverse image searched the tree line, found the tree line on Google image search somehow with a reverse image search, found a, an old listing that some broker had listed on their like website of my house mm -hmm. and then posted my home address, the value of my home and uh, doxed me on Twitter. And I'm like, what is going on here? So I call the person. Yeah. And I look them up and they work in private equity in Boston. Mm. And I look and I'm like, this person works in Boston. This is July 4th week. So, and I, when I look at the person's LinkedIn, we have seven people in common. Mm. So going back to the AR conversation, we'll go, yeah. I'm like, okay, this person literally just doxed me. I asked them to take it down. They told me they won't take it down. And then I look and I, so then I DM them back on Instagram, on Twitter. And I said, by the way, your boss, Susan, uh, and I know seven people in common. Yeah. And these are the seven people. Here's a screenshot. What is she going to think when I call her on Monday and you've doxed me? Here's my phone number if you'd like to talk. He calls me. I said, what's going on? Why would you do this? He's like, well, I really am pissed off about what you said about this person. I was like, you understand I've had like two or three stalkers, like and anybody who's in high profile like I am, like or medium profile, you're going to have weird things happen. You literally put my home address. You put my family at risk. Yeah. What if I put your home address? Yeah. On my, I have four four hundred thousand followers or three hundred thousand followers. You have like three hundred. What if I post your address? He said, like, "Well, I wish you wouldn't do that." I was like, "Well, I asked you kindly to take my address down." Yeah. And uh, I said, "Are you married? Do you?" I said, "I said, how old are you? Are you like twenty five or something?" He's like, "No, I'm forty two. <laughs> I was like, "You're forty two years old." I was like, "Are you married? Do you have kids?" He's like, "Yeah, I just had a baby like six months ago." I'm like, "You're home with your wife. It's July Fourth weekend. You're doxing Jason Calaganis." Mm -hmm because you're upset at me because I said something about a New York Times writer. He's like, yeah, this is the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> I said, I tell you what, let's forget it ever happened. Yeah. And he wrote me back and he said, I just wanted to thank you for how you handled it. Um, my wife said I'm a complete fucking moron. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he literally says to me on email, my wife says I'm a complete fucking moron and I'm really sorry, blah, 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 blah. And I wrote her back, I said, I wrote it back and I said, my wife says the same thing to me all the time. She's like, welcome to the club. It's but totally see, fine. This, 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 uh, but intent, yeah. nuance, it matters, right? And, and the person could be having a bad day and they do something stupid they regret. And what am I gonna do, cancel the guy? No. Or, or no. if I had called They're his lovely. boss, he would have been fired immediately. Yeah. And then I gotta live with this guy got fired and he's a, got a kid. And, and what is this personal destruction? Why are we doing this to each other? Yeah. Life's hard enough. Yeah. Life's hard. <laughs> right, like just getting through the day is hard. Yeah, and and that that little bit of empathy, uh, thinking about the intent of the person, allows you to then sort of de-escalate this kind of conversation that social media, to yes, <laughs> so social media wants to escalate. Yes, so social media wants to what we were saying. Yeah, if if this in in a, in my younger years, I would have retweeted the guy's home address <laughs> yeah. and my address, and would have called his boss and tried to get him fired or yeah. whatever. And it's like now I'm just like, what? 
why are we attacking each other? Life is so hard. I mean, this is what the pandemic, I think, should make everybody realize is like, look at the, how hard it is. Life is hard. And then just think about all the people suffering right now who are at home, the single mom or dad with two or three kids at home in public school. Maybe they've been laid off and their kids aren't learning and, and they're in a tiny apartment. I mean, this has been brutal for a lot of people. And not to mention people losing loved ones or maybe some people got corona and now their lungs are still not right. 